was lying the then. Map never lies. But would a Horcrux show up on the Marauders map? Hey, brother! Earlier this week, as we were recording an episode for our podcast, Through the Gryffindor, we were asked that exact question by reviewer NerdyNerd29. Great name, by the way. And while it sounds like such a simple yes or no question, would a Horcrux show up on the map, it sent us down quite a rabbit hole and we found it oddly difficult to actually answer. The idea is that because a Horcrux would contain a piece of someone's soul, would the map register it while it was inside of the castle? And my own initial thought was, yes, that makes sense, but is having a soul what constitutes representation on the map? I mean, Peeves shows up on the map and he's just a poltergeist, a manifestation, an amortal being, as in never was alive. So certainly he doesn't have a soul and yet he's there bouncing around in the trophy room. So is it just like beings with human-like personalities? Where does that leave ghosts or house elves? And then there's Mrs. Norris. She shows up on the map, but she's the only animal ever mentioned at all. Does that mean that there's something weird about her in particular, or does Harry just not notice Crookshanks or Fox? And does the Great Hall look like a giant cluster flock every morning when hundreds of owls come zooming in? Note to our capture, that was the word flock used there. F-L-O-C-K. Was the basilisk trackable? That was like technically a pet too. I mean, there must be a line drawn somewhere, right? Otherwise any living creature at all would show up and all you'd see is like spiders and ants. What? But perhaps still most importantly, could the map have tracked Horcruxes? Today, we get to the bottom. Okay, so first of all, how does the map even work? How did the Marauders make it? What magic powers it? We actually know that the map is fueled by what's known as a homunculus charm, which enabled the possessor of the map to track the movements of every person in the castle. So as long as you had pre-mapped out the area you wanted to track, you could cast this charm on your map and it should act accordingly. Granted, still a pretty complicated spell, and for a place like Hogwarts required quite a bit of exploration and discovery on the part of the Marauders to make it truly useful. Like, no good in using it to sneak around if you didn't find all the secret passageways first, am I right? Either way, the charm is pretty powerful and can cut through all kinds of concealment. Like, Harry still shows up on the map, even under the invisibility cloak, Sirius still shows up while in dog form, and Barty Crouch Jr. still shows up as himself while under Polyjuice. Although that last one has a bit of a caveat where the map does not take into consideration any titles you may have like junior or senior, leading to a bit of confusion on Harry's part. The spell does specify person though, which I think is interesting and I think starts to help us narrow in on the map's capabilities. Though as we just mentioned a moment ago, it does showcase at least one animal in particular. Mrs. Norris. She is literally the only animal that shows up on the map in the entire book who isn't a confirmed animagus. And if you're a fan of the channel, you'll know where we're going with this, but our explanation is the same for Mrs. Norris as it is for Peeves and therefore also Filch. We here at Super Carlin Brothers would argue that none of these three entities would fall into the person column at all. Instead, they're all three poltergeists. They're metaphysical manifestations of the castle itself. So their presence on the map is far more in keeping with the presence of the secret passageways and moving staircases. On this note, it's almost the only way Filch makes sense at all full video by clicking the card. The point is, they would have far less to do with being, as the rules of the map would explain, a person. This difference is important as we try to understand the rules of the map further though, because poltergeists are often confused with, but also distinctly different from ghosts, which also appear on the map. Harry made his usual detour along the seventh floor corridor, checking the Marauder's map as he went. For a moment, he could not find Malfoy anywhere and assumed he must indeed be inside the room of requirement again. But then he saw Malfoy's tiny labeled dot standing in a boy's bathroom on the floor below, accompanied not by Crab and Goyle, but by Moaning Myrtle. The point is that the map's tracking of Mrs. Norris, Peeves, and Filch is as parts of the castle rather than beings in it, while the ghosts are actual beings tracked by the map. 
And it's essential to make this distinction because we need to know what remains of a ghost enough in order to have its presence marked by the map. And I think we can get the answer to this question thanks to Harry's conversation with Nearly Headless Nick about the potential for Sirius to return as a ghost. I chose to remain behind. I sometimes wonder whether I oughtn't to have. Well, that is neither here nor there. In fact, I am neither here nor there. He gave a small, sad chuckle. I know nothing of the secrets of death, Harry, for I chose my feeble imitation of life instead. We also know from Pottermore that a ghost is an imprint of a person. Having chosen a feeble simulacrum of a mortal life, ghosts are limited in what they can experience. No physical pleasure remains to them. The word mortal stands out to me because I usually do not consider ghosts to be mortal. In a way, this almost sounds like the exact opposite of what happens to a person after a Dementor's kiss. The husk of a human is left without a soul, but in the case of a ghost, it's the soul, or at least a piece of one, without the human. Which, shoot, I feel like that makes you wonder all of a sudden if someone who's received the Dementor's kiss would still show up on the map, because I almost don't think so, but maybe that's a video for another day. So if you're keeping track, poltergeists show up because they're part of the castle, not because they are people. Ghosts, on the other hand, do show up because there is enough soul left over to register as a person. Which of course leads us to the big question for the day. Would a Horcrux show up on the map? Because underneath the above logic, it sure does seem like it should. The thing is though, there is a whole mound of weird circumstances surrounding each instance where we ever may have successfully found out the answer to this question. Firstly, we run into one of the most common dichotomies when it comes to any conversation surrounding a Horcrux, which is separating living containers from inanimate objects. What I mean is Harry, Nagini, and Coral, who Yes, I do think technically would classify as a Horcrux since he houses Voldemort Prime for an entire year, are all obviously alive and have souls of their own. So what would this even look like on the map? Would each of those living beings have their own identities and then Tom Riddle would just be like right next to them everywhere they went? Let's bring it down case by case, starting with Nagini, which is its own unusual situation. As we learn in Fantastic Beasts, Nagini was actually a living, breathing human who was inflicted with a blood curse called a malediction that would slowly transform her permanently from human into snake form. And I think it's important to point this out because it's the reason why Nagini would show up on the map in the first place when other animals do not. Crookshanks, Hedwig, Fox, the Basilisk, or a billion spiders are not all showing up on the map. But could you imagine if this is the case? Like Fred and George, notorious pranksters are like, look Harry, a cool map of the whole castle. And then Harry's all like, ah. actually on this exact same note, house elves don't show up either, but I think that's because house elf magic is so powerful, they're harder to detect. Hence why no one at the ministry could recognize Dobby's presence when he used the hover charm at the Dursleys. Actually, it's also probably this same magic that explains how Dobby can transport people in and out of Malfoy Manor when no one else can. Are you saying you can operate in and out of this room? Could you take us with you? Of course, uh, I'm an elf. Of course, uh, I'm an elf. But guys, we need to take a brief pause right there to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Shopify. Here's a quick peek behind the curtain, if you will. When you start making content online and want to create some kind of merch, it's hard to know whether to use a third-party company that sells everything or if you should do it yourself. And we here at Super Carlin Brothers wanted to be sure that we had full creative control over what we put out there. So we decided to take it on ourselves, but we never could have done that without Shopify. And that's because Shopify is built for businesses of all sizes, small or large. And with its easy to use platform, you can get going in no time flat and have your product available for sale everywhere. One of my biggest concerns in taking on this task internally was just keeping track of everything. But I was amazed at how much Shopify takes out any guesswork at all. It calculates shipping costs, tracks inventory, and provides a huge myriad of reports so you can learn what is working in your shop and what isn't. Plus, even if you have questions, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. So sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash SCB. That's all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash SCB now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. One last time, shopify.com slash SCB. Link in the description down below. Anyway though, 
Back to Nagini. Most creatures don't show up on the map. We've established that. But because Nagini was a human, I don't see any reason why her soul wouldn't reflect that. But the only time she's ever in the castle is during the Battle of Hogwarts, and no one has any need to look at the map. But if they did, my thinking is that it would show Nagini herself, her soul massively outweighing the fragment of Voldemort's. And I think we can say this with some confidence because the same would then also be true for Harry. And for this one, we have plenty of instances where Harry himself is spotted on the map and he's not accompanied by Tom Riddle. The thing with Quirrell that makes him a difficult basis for comparison is that he doesn't just have a fragment of Voldemort's soul. He is actively housing Voldemort Prime, who is even capable of taking the driver's seat if needed. If you could, I just wanna fix that, <laughs> thanks. So I think in this case, Quirrell would constantly be accompanied by Tom Riddle on the map, but at the time that this would be true, Harry wouldn't have the map. Fred and George still would. But that doesn't totally matter either way because precious few people are even aware that Tom Riddle is Voldemort's true identity. So even if Fred and George saw him show up, they probably wouldn't have any reason to believe Tom Riddle was anyone other than just another student or faculty. That or that iguana that he's got is actually someone in the Animagus form. Right, Coral? Cool. Jeez, man, how many people are you hiding in this dang school? Anyway, based on all of our reasoning so far, I think I'm starting to believe you could definitely see a Horcrux on the map, but the next question would be, would it have even mattered? Would it have helped? We have three other Horcruxes that actively spend time in the school, the Diary, Hufflepuff's Cup, and the Diadem. Hufflepuff's Cup isn't terribly interesting to us because the trio have already found it, and the only reason it's in Hogwarts in the first place is because they brought it there. Although they bring it directly to the Room of Requirement and then directly to the Chamber of Secrets, both of which are not plottable on the map. So for like a few minutes in a hallway or two, maybe the map would have shown Tom Riddle as Hufflepuff's Cup. But speaking of the Room of Requirement, that brings us to the Diadem. The diadem is interesting, but the map wouldn't have helped locate it because of specifically where in the school it's hidden. Again, the room of requirement, or the room of hidden things. Here's Harry finally realizing where Malfoy has been going for all of year six. I bet that's why he's been disappearing off the map. Come to think of it, I've never seen the room of requirement on there. Maybe the marauders never knew the room was there, said Ron. I think it'll be part of the magic of the room, said Hermione. If you'll need it to be unplottable, it will be. What I love about Hermione's insight there is that if she's right, the room of requirement would typically be plottable, but under these exact circumstances, it isn't. Meaning if Tom Riddle and I guess thousands of other students hadn't been so specific about what he had asked the room to be, then maybe Harry would have just seen Tom Riddle just standing in an empty room, motionless for years. Kind of creepy, right? That just leaves us with the diary, which once again lands during Harry's second year. So similar to Coral, Fred and George could have seen Ginny spending a ton of time with someone named Tom Riddle and just assumed it was a fellow first year. This is where we have to put the question to the test the absolute hardest. And what I mean by that is reviewing everything else we've established about what the map can show so far. Specifically because deep in the Chamber of Secrets, Tom has lured Ginny down and is actively consuming her life force in order to return to a physical state. And I think we can all agree that had he succeeded, that Tom Riddle absolutely would have appeared on the map. He'd have one up on Ghost even, a body and a soul. But I think that explanation is also potentially our conclusion. If there was enough soul inside of Tom Riddle's diary that he could have come fully back to life, then it's at least as much as whatever a ghost would still retain. And therefore, a Horcrux would show up on the Marauder's map, as long as it's not, you know, contained within a living person. Or Snake, who used to be a living person. Man, huge thank you again to NerdyNerd29 for submitting this particular question. If you guys haven't already checked out our brand new podcast, Through the Gryffindor, I definitely think you will enjoy it. We're basically going chapter by chapter through each of the books, and me and Jay are just giving like our hardcore, nitty gritty, fine tooth comb analysis of what's happening inside of every chapter, alluding to certain like plot points, foreshadowing, theory ideas that we had along the way. If you want to check it out, link in the description down below. Also, be sure to leave a review because at the end of each episode we read one of the reviews and a lot of times people ask a question inside of those reviews and then we end up going into like a total rabbit hole conversation about it make a video about it so check it out guys as always thank you so much for watching be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already if you want to check out chapters one through three of that podcast you can do so right over here otherwise until next time
Bye.